Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Baptist Temple. Thank you so much for being here. Y'all are all quiet this morning. Normally everyone's talking. I had to calm you down. So they're all ready to go this morning. Uh, a couple of quick announcements tomorrow. If you happen to be in Lake Worth, or if you don't happen to be in Lake Worth and just want to support uh, Junior Camp, you can go by Chick-fil-A in Lake Worth. And if you'll mention Trinity Baptist Temple, a uh, uh, portion of the sale will go back to them. And uh, so a fundraiser that they're doing for Junior Camp for little kids uh, tomorrow at Lake Worth, Chick-fil-A. And then we have our 24-hour prayer coming up this week. Uh, there's a few slots left on the sign-up sheet on the Welcome Center. If you have a desire to come up and pray, you only have to pray for 30 minutes. But uh, that's going to be a part of our 24-hour continuous prayer. And so when you're praying, someone will come in the other room right after you're done. And we will be praying for 24 hours. That will be kicking off our resurrection uh, celebration uh, this month. And um, so we're excited about that. And then, of course, come tonight for the, the Easter play. And uh, one more just uh, official warning about that. There will be some somewhat graphic scenes. And so if uh, you don't want your children to see, uh, it's just the portrayal of Christ and, and everything that happened to him. And so uh, if, if uh, you don't want them to see that, there will be child care provided tonight during the, the, the Easter play. And so... I want to read a set of scriptures from uh, chapter uh, Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 12. And there were a lot of things that happened in Christ's life that last week. But uh, I wanted to read this one and, and read the praise that was poured out here by this particular group. And see what they did. And, and hopefully this morning uh, we will have that kind of praise in this place. And so in Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 12, it says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast all, out all them that sought, or all them that sold and bought in the temple. And he overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, and you have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in that temple, and he healed them. And the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did. And the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And they were, and they were sore displeased. And he said unto them, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto him, Yea, have you never heard out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected? Praise. Let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we hear, hear about a group of young people that had a, a perfect praise, Lord, that were just pouring out their, their heart to God. And Lord, I pray that this morning that would be our desire to pour out our everything here during the song service, to pour out our everything while the, while the preaching's being, being, being taught, Lord. And this morning, you would receive all the honor, all the glory from everything that's said and done in this place. Lord, move now during this, uh, during this time. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with us as we sing?
There will come a day Standing face to face In a moment We will be like Him He will wipe our eyes dry Take us up to His side And forever We will be His Singing blessing and honor and glory And power forever to our God Singing blessing and honor and glory And power forever to our God Our God Jesus Singing blessing and honor Glory and power forever. Amen. You have no rival. You stand alone. The heavens worship for your throne there is no one like you you have no equal your kingdom reigns yours is the highest of every name there is no one like you oh my Standing in 
presence of your majesty. You're holy, you alone, the sovereign crown of royalty. You're the king of kings. Oh, mighty, we're standing in the presence of your majesty. You're holy, you alone, the sovereign crown of royalty. You're the king of kings. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you again for being here this morning. If uh, this is your first time visiting with us, we consider you our honored guest. If you need anything, see one of these guys in the gray jackets right out front. There's someone who will be at the Welcome Center to answer your questions and meet any needs you might have. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing on this offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with, um, again, with praise and and worship this morning. We come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts for another day that we can be here in this place and, and, and be together as the body, Lord, and, and be serving you and worshiping you and praising you. Lord, I, I long for, for, for that time when we're going to stand before you, we're going to see you face to face, and we're going to get to worship you and praise you for all of eternity. Lord, I can't wait for that day. This is what we're doing beyond this uh, over and over and over again throughout eternity. Well, what a great God you are. You are amazing. You are, your presence is in this place, and I thank you for it. I ask you to move now during this offering, that you would take it and you would use it for your honor, for your glory. Have your will and way with it, Lord. We love you, and we ask you just uh, bless the remainder of this service. Bless Brother Kyle as he preaches this morning. I want them to have the power from you on high, Lord. Speak your words. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Will everyone please stand? Let's give it up for the Lord again. I love clapping for Jesus. I love saying Jesus. That's a wonderful word. It's a wonderful name. All right. Let's sing. Send the light. There's a call coming. Oh, great. 
grace but Amen. I love that song. Good to see everybody here this morning. Welcome, as Brother Jeffrey said, all our guests and members alike. Uh, also, just a, a reminder, um, don't want to miss tonight. Uh, excited to see uh, what the, uh, the drama team has uh, been preparing for, and uh, hopefully you'll be here and invite a friend, invite a, a neighbor. And uh, be blessed in that. Um, we, uh, we also, as he said, have a, a 24-hour prayer service. It's primarily for our members. Um, and, uh, but we ask you, if you are interested in that, go by to the Welcome Center and sign up. And uh, we need a, a few more slots filled for that. And um, awesome time. We, uh, we come to a place in our, our study uh, returning to God, uh, and, and I just want to kind of give a recap on the journey that the Lord has taken us on, um, a study that has spanned over two years, uh, seen many national and state and personal parallels and lessons uh, along the way. I believe that it's, it's prepared us, it's warned us, it's challenged us, it's taught us, it's encouraged us, um, but it's coming to a close this morning. And uh, the amazing thing is this, God laid this on my heart a long time before we started this, and, uh, but I had no idea what the future held. I had no idea how long it was going to go. I had no idea, um, and I didn't have a plan for a six-week series or a, a, a 12-week series or anything like that. It was just God had put it on my heart and, and just began to, uh, to seek him and continue to seek him uh, throughout this, and I promise you along the way, I've been asking him, God... Do we need to stop here? Are you sure we don't just need to stop here? And, uh, and or just kind of fast forward some, and uh, he would not le let me do that, would not leave me alone. Uh, but I had no idea what was going to be behold uh, us in the future as far as our country as well, what legislative actions were going to be taken over the last couple of years, which we've seen several, uh, specifically attacking our faith. Um, and, and I believe uh, our, our, our values here in America. Uh, we had, I had no idea what the, the situation in Israel would look like. Um, but again, we, we've walked through this, and I believe preaching and teaching the necessary lessons that God uh, knew we need, and I believe our nation needs. I, I believe that our nation needs to hear this message um, proclaimed all over it. And it, because it's this, it's, it's about, again, returning to God, returning to him. And I've shared this over and over again, but I want to share it again. Uh, we, as Christians, aren't Israel, and we, as Americans, aren't Israel. However, it's so important for us to learn from the examples before us, and specifically in the nation of Israel, because of what God told us and got, what God shared with us and what, again, he gave even to Paul to write to certain Gentile believers, which we are... Gentile believers, most of us. And this is what he said to the Romans. In, verse, in chapter 11 of Romans, he said this, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should not be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion a, a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye, as ye in, time, in time past have not believed God, yet now obtain mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy, Gentile believers, they also may obtain mercy. For God hath included them all in unbelief that he might have mercy 
upon all. Oh, the depth and riches, both the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of God or who hath been his counselor or who has first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. The Gentile, the Gentile believers in Corinth, he wrote this, and I've shared this verse several times in 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happen unto them, Israel, the Jews, for examples. And they are written for our admonition. Who? Upon whom the ends of the world are come. And so, again, God has, has shown us through this study that Israel is, is the nation, clearly, that he, in his sovereign will, chose to bring forth salvation in the Messiah through. In, in God's sovereign will, he's shown that they are the people, Israel are the people that he displayed for all of the world to see what his perfect love looks like, what his will is. It's also the people through whom he brought his word through that was delivered to us. They are the people that God desired to show that it's through him only through him, through faith in him, which true faith produces works of obedience to him. And it's through him that our relationship with him can be reconciled. And so in this, for us who are still in that age that Paul was talking about, upon whom the ends of the world have come, I pray that we take this study with us from this point forward as a reminder, as a constant reminder in our lives here as our temporary lives are played out to the end. I pray that during those times that you and I will stray, whether it's in our mind or heart, or whether it's in the actions or the deeds that we do, that we'll remember the great grace that God has shed upon us, the great mercy that he gave to us, the amazing love and the blessings that he loads us with daily, just as, again, he's demonstrated with Israel. But I also pray that we'll remember the detriment of straying, just as we saw in them, that we'll remember the consequences are real, and how severe the consequences can really be because of his great love for us. And I pray with all that that we'll stay sheltered in fellowship, sweet fellowship with him under the shadow of his wings. And so this morning we wrap this up and we're going to look on our last text in, in Ezra chapter 5. And I pray again, this hits us and we take it with us as we wrap up this study. So let's pray this morning and we'll get into this. Father, thank you so much again for this time, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to, to have your word. God, there's so many voices in, in our world today. There's so many things that are trying to tell us what's right and tell us what's wrong, trying to tell us what's permissible and not permissible. And God, the enemy is, is trying to do everything he can do to stop the church and to hinder the, the work, the building of the church, Lord, not. I just pray that we as your people here those who have been redeemed, who have been saved by your grace, Lord, that we'll, we'll take heed very carefully to your word, Lord, that we'll understand that this is, this is a priceless gift, your eternal word that's settled forever in heaven, God, given to us now in this temporal world that we can, we can live by, we can look to, we can, we can learn from, we can, we can completely have everything we need and again, I pray that we'll do that. I pray that we'll take this morning's message. And as we finish this study this morning, God, Lord, it'll impact our lives from this point forward. We'll remember how important it is. As soon as we stray a little bit, or if there's the temptation or, or what have you, Lord, that we'll return to you immediately. Realizing how quickly it can all fall apart. How, realizing how, how, how slippery of a slope it is in turning away from you. Lord, just help us this morning. Get what you want us to have. Use me as a vessel, Lord. I pray you're glorified through all of this. And we'll praise you for all of it. In Jesus' name, amen. In Ezra chapter five, I just want to pick up reading in verse one. Again, we, we finished up chapter four. It says this in verse one, then the, the prophets Haggai and the prophet Zechariah, the son of Edo, Prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jozadak, 
and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. So the, the work of the temple at this point in time, again, as we saw in chapter 4, had been stopped. It had been stopped from 535 B.C. to 520 B.C. But now, in this age, under the influence of two important prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, the work is resumed. And it's so important to understand the, the preaching of these two men were instrumental in this. But not only that, but their labor with the people of God. There, you can take an opportunity, and, and we're going to just see a snapshot of a couple of things God gave to them to, to write. But I encourage you at some point in time, especially if you've gone through this whole study, we're not going to cover everything that God gave to Haggai and, and, and Zechariah, but take some time and see what he gave to them. But it's, they were instrumental. Haggai pro prophesied just briefly for a, a couple of months in 520 uh, B.C., but Zechariah for a couple of years was prophesying. But again, they were helping, exhorting, and encouraging, pushing along, but not just exhorting and, and encouraging with the words. They were right alongside the people, the Bible says in Ezra, helping. And again, I want you to recall, if, if, you, if, you, if you were here in, in, in the beginning of Ezra, um, they were, the leaders were there from the beginning. They were, they were not absentee leaders. They were there helping build the, 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 the altar and helping set up the foundation of the temple. The leaders weren't just saying what the people needed to do. They were encouraging and reminding them about what God wanted them to do, but the leaders were doing it as well. And again, we see poor leadership in our world today. It's always been that way. There's always been the, the example of poor leadership. I've, I've shared this with our ministry leaders before, and, and, and this is the one thing that, that I've said. And it's the same thing we went through, uh, the roles of the home a few years back on, on Sunday nights. You can't say, do as I say, not as I do. That's poor leadership. It would be poor leadership for me to get up here and say, listen, uh, every single Christian in here needs to get out there and shine the light like Matthew chapter 5 says. We are to let our light so shine. But if I as a leader wasn't willing to do that myself, that's poor leadership. And so again, the, 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 the prophets, the leaders, Yeshua, Zerubbabel, all these men were involved in doing that. Not only that, if you'll recall, the older men, the heads of every family, the, 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 the leaders of the group stood up and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go God's direction. We're going to follow the leaders and we're going to go God's direction. But I want to see what Haggai wrote, was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to the people of God during this time. Look in Haggai chapter 1. It'll be on the screen. It says this in verse 1. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet under Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Isn't that interesting? Now, remember, we're going to talk about this in just a second. Ezra was talking about the adversity that was coming from these outside people, trying to get them to stop the building of the process. But here, the prophets are giving us a little more insight, and he's speaking to the people, the, Jew, the Jewish people, and he says, listen, this is what God is saying to you. Is it time for you to sit back and relax in your, in your beautiful houses while God's house lies waste? He goes on in verse 5, now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And there's, there's this, this, this phrase is used many times in scriptures and in, in, in Proverbs, ponder the path thy feet. Um, but this is an important thing. In the New Testament it's stated like this, examine your own hearts. Make, make sure you're, you're in the right place. Make sure your mind is in the right place, your heart's in the right place, and make sure your feet are going the right path. Make sure you're on the right way. 
as the people of God. Because again, the same thing can happen today as it did thousands of years. 500 years before the Lord came to the earth, this was what was going on. The people of Israel had just been delivered from bondage. They had been brought back. God had supernaturally inspired a foreign king, Cyrus, to, to, to not only send them back, but to give them resources and, and to make a decree and all these things to help the building of the, of, of the city of God again that was lying in waste. They were sent back. And now at this point in time, the prophet is speaking from God saying, listen, why is this not going on? Why, why are you sitting in your homes? Why are you living for a, a, a life of comfort when there's still work to do in the building of the house of God? I hope that you're getting that. Why are you sitting in striving for comfort when there's still work to do in the, house of the, in the building of the house of God? He goes on and says, you, you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there's none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Again, it's interesting that the prophet is telling the people of God this at, at, at a, a very crucial time, the building of the temple of God, the building of what God said, this is what I want done, this is what I'm doing. And here he's telling them, listen, consider what you're doing. Consider the life that you're living. Consider your ways. You're, you're, you're toiling, you're laboring, you're, you're getting this stuff and you're putting money in bags that have holes in it. You're, you're living for vanity, I believe, is what... Solomon would say. So consider your ways. And then he says in verse 8, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. What a powerful set of scriptures. I, I, I think about this. Again, this is, this is over 2,500 years ago. And God's telling his people Quit striving for living a life that is, is in constant pursuit of things that will just go away. Build my house. Build, build what I've given you to build. And I'll take pleasure in it. And I'll be glorified. The other prophet was saying similar things in, in, in Haggai chapter 2. Verse four, he's encouraging the people and the work of God. Specifically here, he's gonna to talk to one of the leaders, Zerubbabel, the governor. He says, yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among ye, among you, fear ye not. Again, beautiful encouragement. God reminding them, listen, do what I've given you to do. Work the work that I've given you to work. I'm with you. They were vitally concerned. The, 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 the prophets here with making sure that the building of the temple went on. Why, though? Why, why was God speaking to them, and why was this the urgent message that the people of Israel had to get? Because those prophets, they realized as they were speaking what God gave them that their nation could never fulfill the obligations of what God had commanded in the Mosaic covenant that he had made with them until the temple worship was reinstated until the temple was built. Therefore, they would never be in the will of God again until that happened. It was vital. It wasn't something that was optional. It wasn't something that was a good suggestion. It wasn't something that God uh, preferred. It was God's will. It was God's plan. It was the only way that God said, this is how you're gonna be blessed. 
this is how I'm going to be glorified. Both these prophets, it's interesting that they seem to be pointing, again, God using them, pointing the blame for the hard times that the, nations was going, the nation was going through, for the building of the temple not going on, to the people's lack of response, to the people's lack of obedience. Again, Ezra, we see, and, and we've seen so far, he stressed the opposition from the outside. But I, I want to point something out here that tends to be very similar, if not exact, in our own lives, in the battles that you and I face as the children of God, working and living for the Lord. Think about this. You and I, every day as Christians, face the battle of our own flesh, uh, uh, of saying, it's hard. It's hard to, to, to be that light. It's hard to be that witness at work. It's hard to, to be a testimony for Jesus Christ. It's hard to step out of my comfort zone and share the gospel with somebody. It's hard. Our flesh is, is playing on us. Sometimes it's easier to sit back in our sealed houses. Sometimes it's easier to just sit in comfort in this temporal world and, 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 and pursue those things here. It's easier. The, the, the flesh it is gratified in those things. We also face the battle of the adversary, the enemy coming. Who are you? You're, you're not worthy to share salvation with anybody. You're the chiefest of sinners. You, you, who, if you go to say something to somebody about that they need Jesus, they're going to say you need him just as bad. Enemy throwing darts and, and of doubts and fear and, and criticism, all the things that, that, that he does good and does well and has for thousands of years. But not only that, the adversities that we face in this world as well. Just the things that we run into, the, 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 whether it be our, our health or, or other, other things that come against us in, in trying to keep us from working and helping build the house of God. And I want you to remember what the house of God today is. Remember, it's the church. That's, we've already seen that in this study. We've, we've, we've examined it over and over again. That's what Jesus said he was going to build. But who are his, who are his workers? We are his, work, we are his workmanship. We are the co laborers together with God in this building process. So you and I have the same charge as the children of Israel did back then, to follow him in faith and obedience, and not live in fear and convenience. Follow him in faith and obedience, but not live in fear and convenience. The building process here, again, was spearheaded by Zerubbabel and, 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 and Joshua. They were both the civil and, and, and um, the religious leaders, respectively, there. Uh, but this is, this is important just as it's always been and just as it is now. As they begin to resume the work, as they begin to say, okay, you know what? These prophets are right. God has said this. God has ordained this. This is the only way God's going to be blessed. They, they begin to, to pick up the, the bricks again. They begin to, to lead the way again. The people begin to get back in the building process. And what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that the enemy of God the enemy of God's people, do you think that he is going to say, okay, it didn't work. I'm, I'm going to back off now. Now that they're starting back up, I, I'm going to quit. You think the enemy's going to quit? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He, he got them to stop one time. The adversary, the adversity came against them, and they, they stopped. The building process was halted. But now as the, the, the men of God, the prophets of God are speaking the truth and speaking God's word back into them, reminding them of what they are to do and what they are supposed to be doing, and they begin to pick, pick, up, pick the work back up and begin. And chapter 5 reveals another attempt to stop this work. Another letter was written to halt the work. It was written to Darius. Hey, you know what? These people are, are, are doing something that's against what you want. There was a request to search the records uh, of Babylon in the past. Hey, you need to make sure that these Jews are, are speaking the truth because I think they're trying to take over the, 
your throne to try to impede on your power. You need to search the records. So Darius does that. He, he searches for the records to see if there was a decree made by Cyrus that was going to allow the Jews to do this. Do you think the decree was found? The decree was found. In a coffer, in a palace, probably in, not in the main place there of the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire at that point in time, but in maybe a, a, a summer resort, if you will, for, for Cyrus, the time that he would have written this decree, they find it in a coffer, this decree in a scroll. And guess what God does on behalf of his people? Again, the people had stopped. They had become comfortable. They'd begin to, to, to live for convenience. The prophets of God come along and say, hey, what are you doing? Consider your ways. Who are you living for? You're living to, you're sowing and you don't bring anything in and put money in bags and it has holes in it. You're living for vanity. You're not pursuing the right thing. Get back to work on the building of God. Get back to doing what God has called you to do. And as soon as they begin to do that in chapter five, again, opposition rises, but because of his people clinging to him in faith and obedience, doing what is in his will to do, God moves on behalf of his children. He does the same exact thing today. But I, 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 wanna, I wanna look at what God did so far beyond what could be imagined. Again, I, I want to put it in our terms today. There's legislative things that have been, uh, again, written in just the last couple of years that have gone directly against biblical truths and biblical standards. There's legislation, there's always, there's, there's self-interest groups, there's people always trying to come against and attack the foundation of what our country was built upon. There's, it's, it's, it's always a, a constant barrage. City uh, councils, uh, states, our nation is, is under constant attack, legislative attack, to give in to the, these interest groups that are wanting to write God completely out of the, out of the nation, completely off of the books of America. It would be as if all of that stuff came down on us. All of the legislation, legislative action came down and it was pretty much illegal to do anything. Share Jesus with someone outside the door, pray in a public place, all the things that we have freedom now to do, we take, advantage, or take for granted, all those things, illegal. You cannot do that anymore. And even to the point that maybe it would be illegal to talk about it with anybody anywhere other than a private meeting place. Imagine that. How could it get to that place? Maybe the fear, maybe the comfort, the pursuing of convenience and comfort, maybe exactly what happened with Israel they, they got their houses set up. They were sleeping. They were living. They were, they were setting up their farms again. They were setting up their, their commerce again. Hey, the altar's there. The foundation of the temple's built. The, the walls are starting to go. I mean, so, some of this stuff, but we can get to, to, to God's building later. We got to get our, our, our system of life back up and going. And they became so focused and, and, and zeroed in on that. And the enemies came and were attacking and in constant barrage and then legislative action came down and said, stop the building. Again, the prophets of God come along and say, what are you doing? Didn't God give this to you? Didn't God mandate that you would build this house for him? Didn't God use even a foreign king to decree this is what you're going to do? And I don't know about you, when again I see what has, has transpired in our nation, how a nation was, was, was raised up, I believe supernaturally, by God. 
And that we experience so much freedom now that the kingdom of God truly over the history of America has been built up missionaries and preachers and churches all over the place. Yes, 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 yes. But now we're in a time. I believe that we can either sit back in convenience of our sealed houses or we can realize, listen, we better get busy building the house of God. We've got a short time, and we need to stop. We need to consider our ways, and we need to get busy about that. But look what God did on behalf of his people. When they said, you know what? We've got a mind to work now. We're going to get back on track with God. We're going to do things God's way. We're going to start building God's house. We're going to do it the right way, disregarding what the enemy was doing, disregarding what their fears may be, disregarding the, the pursuit of convenience and comfort that they had been pursuing before, disregard setting all that aside and saying, let's do it God's way now. Let's do what God has called us to do. Darius tells the governor, he writes a decree, and the first thing that's contained in this decree is this, leave the Jews alone and don't interfere with the building of the temple. The governor was the, the, the governor that was trying to stop this process. He was the one, when he saw them resume the building again, he was like, no, 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 who told you guys can do this? They said, hey, well, we got a decree. And that's the one that said, okay, you know what, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write the king. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. So he writes the king, the, the, the search is made, they find the decree, and Darius says, you know what? It's absolutely valid. This is a law. So this is what the letter he writes back to that governor who's trying to stop, again, this is legislative action, trying to stop the work of the building of God's house. Leave the Jews alone and don't interfere with them building the temple. Leave them alone. The second thing he told them to do, all the tax money that was to be taken in in his area was to be used to help finance the building of the temple. Not only that, the animals and the supplies for the offerings and the sacrifices and all the feasts were to be supplied by this governor in his, in, his, in his area. On top of that, the third thing, anyone who disobeyed this decree would suffer a violent fate. Can you imagine that? I mean, th think about what just happened. The Jews, they were, they were fearing legislative action. That's why they had stopped. They become comfortable. They were all about themselves. They're all about you know, their, their own lives and, 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 and substance that, that this temporal life could offer. They were all about that. God's messengers come along and say, what are you doing? Get building what God has given you to build. And they say, you know what? That's right. We're focused on the wrong thing. We need to start focusing on God more. We need to start focusing on him wholly, building his work. And they begin to pick those bricks up and they get next to each other. And there's unity and there's strength among them. And they're, they're building together the house of God. And opposition rises up again. Who gave you permission to pick up those bricks? Who gave you permission to tell that person about Christ? Who gave you permission? Who did you tell that? And they continued steadfast through the opposition. And the opposition goes and tries to get legislative action to come against them again to get them to stop because of their faith and their obedience in God. God showed up and did what was exceeding abundantly above all that they could ask or think because it was in his will. It was what he commanded. It was in his word. See, that's where we get handcuffed, and that's where we, we, we handicap ourselves from receiving the best and the blessings that God has in this life is, again, we're, we're afraid sometimes. We're held captive by our fear. We're, well, what will somebody say? Well, am I going to get fired? Is somebody going to hurt me? Is somebody going to say something? Is somebody going to do something? And we're held captive in that. It's just easier. It's more convenient to live for the temporal things and not, not, not step out and cross those lines and, and be those ambassadors that he's called us to be and not grab those bricks right alongside with each other and, and build the, 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 the building of God. Again, it's just a little more comfortable to do, not do that. But when God's people get unified, again, in his work, being obedient to his commands, he shows up in ways and does things that seem completely impossible. That's what he did for the Jews. That's what he does still today. He said, hey, the, the icing on the cake, if anybody disobeys this decree, this is what's gonna happen to them. 
Ezra chapter six, verse 11. Also, I've made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word or depart from it, let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up, let him be hanged thereon. Now, I wanna go into a little more graphic detail. What this actually means is let him be impaled. Take the wood off his house and impale him. It's a violent death. And let his house be made a dunghill for this. And the God that hath caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people that shall put their hand to alter and destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. That's amazing. God, again, intervening on behalf of his people to make sure that his will is accomplished. And not only the enemy's plans were foiled, but they backfired. I want to say this. When we begin to question our, our obedience, that, that maybe, maybe our obedience to God's will and God's word are, is going to lead us to a ledge and there on that ledge, we'll be all alone just to suffer our own, our, own, our own defeat, our own shame and humility. Well, if I do that, I'm gonna be put out there and it's just, uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be bad. When we get to that place, well, if, if I try to tell that person and I, and I don't have the words, I'm gonna look embarrassed. Let's too remember the promise of God. He promised Israel, but he's also promised us. It was given to the nation of Israel very clearly, an everlasting covenant. But with those of us who are charged with building his building now, his charge goes like this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given to, unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we get into the, the enemy comes against us and those attacks come and we say, I just can't, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know enough, I'm, I'm ashamed, I'm not this, whatever. All those attacks, all those fears, all the things trying to keep us down from being a part of building the, 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 the building of God. And we say, I'm gonna get out on this ledge and, and it's just gonna be a disaster. Remember the promise of God. I've charged you, I've commanded you to help me build my house, to help me build my building and know that I'm with you Always, even until the end of the world, I'm with you. We've got to remember, God cannot lie. Again, they resumed the work. They said, you know what? Let's follow God. They did. Again, enemy attacks, they remained steadfast. God worked it out for their good, for their benefit as well, and for his glory. You know why it's hard to be a faithful witness? You know why it's hard to be a steadfast soul winner? You know why it's hard to be an enduring worker in the kingdom of God? Because the same thing, our flesh, is the same flesh as it was for the Israelites. Their flesh, just like our flesh, was bringing them constantly, trying to bring them into submission, specifically submission of fear, submission of, uh, of pleasing the flesh. Same thing for them, the same thing for us today. Again, the adversity, throwing darts. The looming adversity of legislative action and crippling us in, 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 in fear and stagnation. Kids, can I wear this shirt to school? Can I tell this to my friend? People at their job, can I say this about my church? Can I invite them? Can I, can I share Jesus with them? So much fear swirling around, crippling the people of God that it's just a lot easier and a lot better if we just kind of mind our own business and do our own thing and, and show up to church when we're supposed to. And God says, go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, 
build my kingdom, and I'm going to be with you every step of the way. There's nothing to fear. See, the reality just for the Israelites is the same for us. If they weren't building, they weren't in God's will. If we aren't building, we're not in God's will. Israel had stopped in fear. Many had halted the work. And I want to speak to you this morning. Maybe that's where you are. Maybe you're crippled in fear. Maybe you feel insufficient. Maybe you feel like I don't have the words. I, I get embarrassed. I'm shy. I, I, I feel unworthy. I feel dirty. I, 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 all these things coming against you, and, and, and you're just you, you're crippled. And, and, and it's just easier not to help build than it is to help build. Know, know this: the enemy and the flesh are robbing you of the blessings of God. Not only the blessings of God, but the power of God. Did you see what he did on their behalf? Not only that, but the end result. The enemy's robbing you of rewards. Rewards that will go beyond this life. Eternal rewards. My prayer is that it ends today for all of us. Do you know how Israel responded? Back in our text, Ezra chapter six, and the children of, of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month for the priests and the Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves and the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity. And all such as separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat. And kept the, fa the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful, and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them, and strengthened their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. You know what they did after God showed up and did that? They celebrated the Lord. They were following his will, they were obeying his commands, and they kept the Passover, which represented their deliverance of captivity, from captivity by God. It was their time to say, God, you're our deliverer, you're our redeemer, you're our savior. We praise you together. If you were to read the rest of Ezra, if we were to go through it, it shows. Ezra devoting himself to studying and teaching the work of God and the will of God, the word of God, I mean, and the will of God. It goes on and it says that there was a genealogy. After the genealogy, a request for the Levites to come, all of the priestly services instituted in the temple. And then in chapter nine and 10, as we get ready to close, everything seemed to be going well. The rebuilding was going. Things were getting set up. They were, they were going, and maybe, maybe, just maybe they got wrapped up in, in living in, the, in, in their life. Maybe they got, they got caught up in going through the motions Maybe it wasn't about convenience or flesh, or maybe it wasn't about, the, but maybe it was just them going through the religious motions, and they forgot what the point of it all, again, was, is to follow the Lord, to obey his commands. It's a major problem when we come to chapter 9 and 10. You know what they were doing? They began intermarrying which God had commanded them a long time before not to do. Matter of fact, if you'll remember, if you've been here from the beginning, that's where this all started. What did Solomon do? I know God, yeah, you know, I know he says that we're not supposed to do this, but how many wives and concubines did he have? So now we've come full circle. They were intermar intermarrying, why? To please themselves, I guess. Maybe it was, again, maybe them going through the motions, they left off this vital point that they were to be separate and to be the people of God. I think that's what so many Christians get held captive with today. We can compromise who we are and what we're supposed to be doing in this world all to please our flesh. I've heard people say, once stood very strong now compromise. Things that were once important, no longer important. If you're a child of God 
in here, I, I believe that, like me, I believe most of us can admit that compromise either has existed in our life or it does exist right now. An area that we're compromising. Again, maybe it's been in the past, and you know, you know what, I, I've been there before, and I've experienced the consequences of compromise in my life before. But here's the, rea- here's, here's the big deal. We can't be okay with it if we know it exists in our life. If we know that, that I once stood strong here and I once was trying to, to be the, the vessel and the instrument that God wanted me to be, I was striving to, to, to be usable of God. But you know what? I, I just got, I, I began to go through the motions and then it just kind of became the routine and, and religious and it kind of just became something I wasn't interested in anymore. And, and now I'm not a part of, of helping build his kingdom anymore. We can't be okay with that. Remember what I said a while ago? If we're not building, we're not in God's will. That's why he still has us here as his people. You've heard me preach that message before. If if it wasn't what God's will is for his people, then as soon as we said yes to Jesus, we trust you. I surrender all. You're my Lord, my Savior. He would zap us up to heaven to be with him forever. Why would he leave us in a filthy place full of sin and hurt and death and disease and, and, and all the things that you and I have to deal with as his children in this earth? Why would he leave us here? Why would he leave us here to suffer the hurts of loss and disappointment? Why would, as a good father who wants good things for his children, why would God leave us here if we weren't part of the building process of the kingdom of God? If we didn't have a vital role, every single child, in placing another block, reaching another soul, sharing the gospel with another person to see his kingdom further? Why would he leave us here? He wouldn't. Just like I would never leave any of my girls in a filthy, hurtful place if there wasn't an eternal purpose in it. Ezra wasn't okay with it. He was broken. He he prayed, he, he fasted, he was mourning over the sin. And that brokenness swept through the whole people. Ezra chapter 10, verse 2. Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and we've taken strange wives of the people of the land. Listen to this statement. Please hear it as we get ready to close. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them. Did you hear this? said, let's not only take away and put away the strange wives, the wives we shouldn't have married in the first place, but also the children by those wives. According to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. See, it's a difference between pursuing our will and pursuing God's will. Having respect for what we want or having regard for who God is and what he wants. And that's what he's saying. Those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth to thee. They're talking to Ezra. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. You say it and you get us on track with God's word. You get us on track with God's will and we are behind you 100%. Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word. And listen to those three words, and they swear. Yet now is their hope in Israel concerning this thing. They knew it was their only hope to be 100% committed going God's way. Look, we, we've, done, we've seen God do miraculous things. God has built up. God has delivered. God has decreed through foreign kings. God has done things that are beyond what we could ever ask. And now look where we found ourselves. We've compromised. We, 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 we've left off what God has commanded for us to do. And Ezra, as our leader, as a spiritual leader, if you will say, let's go, then we'll go. You just need to rise up and say the word. They were 100% committed. You've heard me talk about the power that comes only with unity. That's where they were. 
And I have to say this morning as we end this, this study, I believe with all of my heart, with all the warnings, with all the, the, the negative things that we see in our nation, with all the, the, the dangerous things that are going on in our world, I have to tell you right now, I believe. Yet now there is hope in the church. Yet now there is hope, therefore, in America. I believe it with my heart. Some people say, well, no, it's the end. And I've even said before, I, I believe we've, we've passed the threshold, but I still am never going to write off our God. And it's not that he won't do it, or that he doesn't want to do it, or that he can't do it. I believe if we're gonna see that hope realized, it, it rests on us. This is where it is. Same powerful God as he was back then, moving the hearts of kings, decreeing, blessing, doing things that are just beyond what you, you would think could happen. Same God is working today, same God. He's able to do the same thing in our nation, among our church, the church throughout the world. He's able to do it, but it's only going to come through our returning to God sincerely, committing together to turn to him, committing to his building, repenting now. If there's compromise, if there's sin, repenting now, turning and removing, doing away with it all, committing together, recommitting. That's what the children of Israel were doing. You know, on our, our, on our decision cards, we have a place where you say, recommitting. And some people say it's, you know, maybe you're, you're struggling with the assurance of your salvation. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you're here and say, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I'm, I'm going to heaven when I die. I know I'm saved. But the truth is this, I have compromised. The truth is this, I have been living in convenience. The truth is this, I have been living more for my comfort than for God's commands. And maybe today is the day you recommit your all to him. Maybe today you say, you know what? Brother Kyle's not asking for a, to, to make a covenant. He's not saying everybody needs to swear, but I, I'm saying this this morning. If we all need to recommit our all to the Lord, let's not let anything keep us from doing that. It's eternally vital. Will you join me in recommitting? Will you join me and say, you know what? I'm gonna do it even if no one else does. Even if no one else moves, even if no one else makes that. I'm not gonna do it just for a week. I'm not gonna do it for a month. From this point forward, not as an, an emotional response, but because the building of God depends on it, because his glory is at stake. Because we are his building we are his work. We are his hands and his feet. And we've got to get to work. We come this morning as the musicians come. Will you commit? Will you recommit? And lastly, maybe you are here and you say, man, I don't know if I'm going to spend my eternity in heaven or not. Maybe you're not quite sure if hell or, or heaven's gonna be your eternal destiny. But I, I'm, I'm, I just pray and I beg you, at least do this. If you wanna know for sure where you're gonna spend eternity, come, come down, then we'll have a couple of ministers and all they're gonna do is gonna show you out of God's word how you can know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. But don't wait. Don't leave out of here. Come this morning and see what the Lord's done and experience eternal life, forgiveness of sins, that free gift of everlasting life. But Christians this morning, returning to God, let's recommit our all. If you can't sincerely say, it's just, as, as the prophet said, consider your ways. If we consider our ways, if you can't sit there, if I can't stand here and say, I'm giving my all to the Lord. That's where I'm at in my life right now. I'm giving everything. 
I'm striving. I'm, I'm trying to be the light. I'm trying to witness. I'm trying to help build his kingdom. I'm, I'm encouraging other Christians. I'm, I'm helping disciple. I'm helping teach. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm sharing his word. I'm doing everything. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% committed to the Lord. If that's you, then praise God. Thank you so much. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Keep going. But maybe you're Maybe you're at that place to say, I need to recommit. I'm asking you, please. My daughters depend on it. The next generation, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, they de- they're depending on us to be 100% committed to the kingdom of God. It matters for all of eternity. Let's be committed to his work. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. Thank you so much for this message, God. It's challenged me. God, I want to give you I want to give you more. God, help us not to take lightly what we've seen in your word. and God, the examples we've seen in the past, help us not think that we're exempt. Lord, help us not think that we're exceptional in the fact that we're going to miss or we're, we can avoid doing what you've called us to do. Lord, help us this morning to truly consider our ways and truly evaluate whether we're pouring ourselves into you and your kingdom or not because, Lord, I know one second after I take my last breath in this, on this earth, all that's going to matter is is you and your kingdom what I did with this time for you and your kingdom Lord help us be committed and again if we're not Lord help us this morning as your people as a church to recommit ourselves to you be focused on eternity I want to thank you again for this time thank you for your word we ask and pray all this in Jesus name amen if you'll stand this morning and come as they sing. Just as I am without out one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou didst become to thee, O Lamb.
Thank you so much again for being here this morning. And guests, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you come by and get a chance to meet you if I haven't met you already and uh, stop by the Welcome Center. Uh, if you're a first-time guest, to get that gift Brother Jeffrey was talking about. Um, also, please be here tonight. Um, it's going to be an awesome, uh, awesome drama and um, just another uh, encouragement and reminder of what our Lord's done. And so, uh, 5.30. Hope this. We'll see you all there. Brother Jeff, if you'll come and dismiss us now, hope you'll have a great afternoon. God bless you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray that you would move tonight, Lord, in a mighty way. That you'd bless all those that are working so hard to, to make this uh, presentation happen, Lord. And I, I pray for uh, the lost that might come into this building tonight, Lord. I pray that uh, tonight would be the night they give their life to Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we enter into this uh, Easter week and we begin the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord for this month, Lord, I just pray that you would prepare us, Lord. Prepare us to, to, to be ready to do whatever it takes to, uh, for you and for your kingdom. And as we heard this morning, to be uh, completely committed to you, Lord, uh, with everything that we have. Uh, that's where we should be, Lord, and we should stay in that place. We should continue striving for you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, just bless now as we go our separate ways. Bring us back here tonight at 530. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>